there are tools, please use them. If there's someone that is annoying you, if there's someone that's harassing you, mute them. They'll never know. They'll just, they'll think, don't block them because then it's like they know that you've bothered them. Just mute them and then they'll think that they're having a conversation with you and then you'll never know they exist. It's kind of sexy, isn't it? I'm Daniel Powell and welcome to Forever Scrolling, an attitude series about mental health, social media and getting through the night, where every week you will hear stories from me and other LGBTQ creators. This week we are talking about dealing with trolls and bullies. Dealing with trolls online or in real life is something that all of us in the LGBTQ community have had to learn to deal with. If someone wants to come and be awful, and some people really are just incredibly rude, then they're blocked. You can block them, you can hide them, you can curate your space to make it safer for yourself. Because it's block, block, me block. It's safe to say that as someone who's spent their entire life on the internet, I've seen some stuff. You just need to remind yourself that you're valid, you're fine, you're doing nothing wrong bothering these people by simply existing. And the best thing to do is just to mute them and then just let them scream into the void as you go about your day. It feels powerful. Over the years of doing YouTube, I've learned a very, very simple trick. Um, when I get a negative comment or someone that's obviously being a little bit of a troll, I look at my phone and my first immediate response is, I'm going to respond to this person because I need to educate them, right? This one time I had one single person being very, very constant, commenting the most horrendous things and then i thought listen corey you can respond to this person you can block this person you can there's a lot of like tools and equipment for you to to not deal with the problem right but then i thought okay let's see if i respond but let's respond in a very different way so what i did was i i commented back and i was like hey um it seems like you're dealing with a lot of like hurt send me a dm and i'll be more than happy to talk with you it was so, so heartwarming to know that this person came back with like this massive long apology saying that they're so sorry that they said all these horrendous things and that they were just lashing out. And then I kind of thought like, this is probably most people online who are being trolls and bullies. Like it, it, it's spiraling from some other, other hurt. I think naturally people get defensive when you imply that anything they've ever done or said might be wrong. So sometimes, it depends on the person, it can be better to message them privately and just go, hey, I don't know if you mean to say this, but this can be really hurtful because this, and someone might feel less embarrassed or called out publicly. And then again, depending on what someone does, they might just need a smackdown in the middle of a Facebook chain with your grandma. So take it upon yourself. I believe in you, do the right thing. If you feel comfortable, you don't have to put up with this. Remind yourself of that. You're doing nothing wrong. It's not your responsibility. But if you see that someone can be reached, sometimes just talking to them, empathizing with them, letting them know what the truth really is and talking to them patiently, you can redeem somebody. I mean, I've had old people in my family that they've said something at the dinner table and I've gone, that's a yikes, granddad, but let me explain why. And then five minutes later, it's all cool. So take, take it upon yourself to redeem your problematic family. I believe in you. If you're young and living at home in a toxic environment with people that are LGBTQ plus phobic, you got this. There's only a couple more years before you can move out and find your chosen family and live your best queer life. I learned that blood does not make a person love me. Um, I need to pick my own family. That's what I've done. So the people who are homophobic, I've been able to separate myself from them. Growing up, it was hard. Sometimes I did have um, some family members who were homophobic to towards me when I was 16, 17, recognizing that I was attracted to the same sex. Um, but it's one of those things that's like, you have to learn what works because every family is different. Like some people can't separate themselves from their family. Here's something that will blow your mind. Just because someone's LGBTQ doesn't mean they can't be a piece of shit in a, in a load of other ways. Being a minority in one regard does not give you the right to speak for all minorities. And it doesn't mean you can't hold prejudice. How we deal with members of our own community who make bigoted or prejudiced comments online is tricky. No one has the right to kick anyone out of the LGBTQ plus community, since obviously membership is based on how we self-identify and while we can't give someone a free pass for holding views that we find abhorrent merely because of their sexual preference or gender identity, we should do something. And I personally don't believe a combative approach has ever helped anyone change their mind on something. 
I think it takes time and a steady drip of humanizing information. They should be put in situations that make them reconsider their own previously held beliefs, but it has to come from within themselves because that's the only way to change a prejudice. We all have struggles as LGBTQ people. So if someone says something that is in some way harmful, just say to them, come on, like do one step with your brain. How would you feel if someone said this to you about this thing that you relate to? Talk to them as a human, get them to understand, and then hopefully they can change the way that they act and become a better person. I had an experience that it was like this troll just kept commenting things and I was like, um, is everything okay? <laughs> like I reached out, I was like, this is wrong, you're saying this because like, you have like, it's hateful, it's homophobic, blah blah blah. And then they ended up being like, oh yeah, sorry, I was just projecting because I live in a homophobic environment and I don't want to come out of the closet. And I was like, it's okay. So I like talked to the troll about it and like made them understand that they don't have to put this hate online if they are insecure about who they are. Exactly. You really do never know where someone's coming from. So approaching a troll with love can maybe just help them out of a bad situation there in themselves. Because they're also, even if it's not, even if they'll just like be like, no, like it just confuses them. If you just give them love, they'll be like, wait, what? And mm -hmm. you're like, it's okay. Just go, go live your life. I'm Which it's taking life. the high road ultimately. Yeah. yeah. Normally when we speak to people who have bigoted or close-minded views, it's often from a lack of education and a lack of understanding for the community. But for people who are actually already inside of that, you kind of have to take a different approach. Now the first thing that I would try and do is I would try and educate them. I would try and make them understand why what they've said is wrong and how they should word it or how it should be said differently or how their view is currently not beneficial to the wider community. Now, if you're trying to educate someone or you're trying to change someone's perspectives and they're not being receptive and it's very obvious that no one is gonna win in this situation, then I would just back away from it and I would just get rid of them from my social sphere. I don't need that in my life. All that hate and negativity is just not good for you. Even a few years ago on the internet, a lot of people had a lot of fun, and even within the LGBTQ community, speculating about you know celebrities' relationships and their sexuality. And as someone who was in the closet, I found that really hard because I thought that there were these people that kind of had good intentions, but then they were you know really affected by mental health with the speculation. And I've seen people in real life that they watched my 45 minute long coming out video, sorry about that, and they said to me, you know, I didn't realize at the time what this can do to people and how it can be harmful. You know, I thought I was an ally. I thought I was a good person doing the right thing. So I just want to say, sorry that I did that. And this wasn't something that I was expecting. I didn't even, you know, I, I wasn't telling myself I even deserved that. But to hear people say that to me really felt like, is the world becoming a better place? Should we be hopeful for the future? It's a nice story. Thanks for watching this Attitude video with me, Daniel Howell, and remember, you will get through this night, you are going to be okay. Leave a comment down below sharing your stories if you're happy to do so, and give this a like if you enjoyed it. And if you are interested in laughing at my pain and me going a bit too deep into the dark hole of my own sorry state and learning some stuff about mental health, you can pre-order my book, You Will Get Through This Night. So thank you very much to Attitude, and thank you for watching. Bye.